What's going on guys? Welcome back to Spinning True. Today, it's just me, my phone, and some bikes. And I think I just did a video where I talked about my Rally Technium Resto Mod. And I said in that video, I don't really feel like doing a video about it because I just wanted to zone out with the bike, which I think is really healthy. And that day, which was a couple days ago, I didn't really feel like talking to anyone. I did just want to be alone with, you know, my thoughts and my bike and, um, that was then. Today, I thought I would actually kind of show you where I'm at with this build because it's been pretty interesting and I've had some challenges. So let's take a look at what I've got to so far. So there's the bike. I do have most of the parts. I don't have the wheels yet, but I thought I'd get pretty much everything else onto the bike. So I started off with the crank set. It's the Praxis Alba and forgot that when you install this crank set on a mountain bike frame or actually on any frame that uses um yeah if you install the praxis alba on any frame it's only compatible with 68 millimeter frames and you do not use spacers with the bottom bracket the bottom bracket does come with two two, mil two millimeter spacers and the instructions are confusing because they say only for mountain bikes but what I forgot is that this is a road bike crank set. So that was referring to the mountain bike crank sets that Praxis makes, not mountain bike frames, if that makes any sense. So I spent like an hour trying to figure out why the bearings kept binding when I was installing the crank set and finally realized that it was because of those spacers. So I removed them, got the crank set on here and the chain ring as well, which uh, again is this 34 tooth steel SRAM chain ring and then after that i got the derailleur on i probably should straighten this derailleur hanger once the wheels are in but i just kind of wanted to get it set up so the derailleur's here i've also got the shifter mounted and i'm going to run the cabling still today and then i got the u-brake kind of set up here at the back this is a die comp um can't remember what model it is it's the 8996 or something instructions are kind of confusing here and I really need the wheel in to kind of get it set up, but I put in some Jaguar pads just because I didn't think the green die comp ones would be very good. And got that all mounted, of course, with grease on the posts and everything. And I got the cabling kind of set up, but the brake needs to be balanced and it's really not set up at all. It's just kind of attached. Got some pedals on. I put on these Wellgo double-sided pedals I had. They're kind of heavy, but I do like having the SPDs and the flats. And I think I will be using my clipless shoes with this bike. So got that. And then the last thing that actually kind of prompted me to make this video now is uh, that I found out that rallies, at least older rallies from the 80s, have this weird cantilever setup where the holes are on the outside of the cantilever posts. And normally they're on the inside. So the brakes I got, which are the Shimano CX-50s, are not going to work on this frame. Did some quick research. There are some options. I think the Avid Shorty Ultimates will work, which is a shame because they're way more expensive, but they don't rely on those holes to maintain the spring tension. So I'll probably get a pair of those for this bike and then a little teaser on another bike coming up, hanging up over here, is this Schwinn Woodlands. I couldn't help myself buying. It was $60 for the complete bike and I sold the wheels for 30. So basically a $30 frame set and I guess I'm putting um, Shimano CX-50s on that bike. So that's a future project there. But uh, that's kind of where we're at here with the rally. All right, guys, so it's a little bit later, actually quite a lot later, several weeks, in fact. And I finally built the wheels. So here they are. This is the front wheel, obviously. The rim is a Sun Ringle Rhino Light. And I really like this rim. Very affordable. The rim itself is only like $30, $35. And it comes in different finishes, including this crazy high polish, which I normally wouldn't go for, but I think it's really going to pop on this bike. Haven't cleaned it yet. You can see it's full of fingerprints. That's why I normally don't like this, but I think it's going to work really well. The hubs are Shimano Dior from their trekking line, so no phantom disc brake mount that is going to look out of place. It's just a straight hub. Pretty basic, but I always think the Shimano stuff works really well. The spokes are DT Swiss. They are 1415 gauge double butted spokes. And then the tire is the Panaracer Fire XC Pro. I'm not too familiar with this tire, but 
a very affordable tire. I think it's like a $20 tire. Um, has good reviews for being supple and also working well off-road. And I do want to ride this off-road. So I did want an actual mountain bike tire. They're 2.1s, which is probably about the limit of what can fit on this frame. Maybe I could fit like a 2.25 or something. Um, but I didn't want to go too big without trying it first. And yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now. I also obviously have the back and I've been installing this cassette, the MicroShift Advent X cassette, but I wanted to show you that I like on bikes that, you know, are sort of higher, not necessarily higher end, but you know, my bikes, I like using a little bit of anti-seize on the cassette lock ring because they can get seized on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread that onto there. So I could use a torque wrench on this, but the main thing is to just not overdo it. You don't wanna go absolutely crazy. 40 Newton meters is the torque spec and it's not really that much. So I think that looks pretty good. All right, let's get the back wheel on there. So I've gotta go around that U-brake. Got the derailleur here. Yikes. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those. The um, the U-brake with this big tire is sort of keeping me from pushing the wheel forward enough. I guess there we go. All right, that's that. And uh, it's caught on the U-brake, but let's get this installed and then we'll install the U-brake cable and then see where we're at. But the other thing to note here is that that wheel went in perfectly as far as the dropout spacing. Again, you know, I did spread the dropout to 135 millimeters. This is a 135 mil hub and it went in there beautifully. So I'm gonna pull back and do up the quick release. And now let's see if I can get the brake to work. Okay, so the tire is rubbing on the top of the U-brake here. So to fix that, I'm gonna squeeze the caliper together and try and get the straddle cable reinstalled, which might not be all that easy. Go into that. And there we go. That's perfect. It's now just rubbing on the cable a little bit. Okay, so here you can start to get a look at what the spike is going to look like, and I think it's going to be amazing. I'm so pumped about this. Uh, all the cables have been run already. The derailleur has kind of been set up. Uh, the U-brake is there with the cables. And off camera, I also installed the Avid Shorty. I think I did do a couple of videos about this because this was very, very tricky. There was a lot to having the right spacers and figuring out how the spring tension worked, but that is installed now. And now I'm gonna go through and basically set up the cabling. So I'm gonna set up the brakes, adjust the pads, set up the rear brake, adjust the pads, install a chain and adjust the derailleur. This is mostly pretty basic stuff. So I'm just gonna do that right now. I will do more rest of mod type videos where I show that and then I'll show you the final result. Okay guys, and there we go. The bike is completely done now. I just sort of got into the zone and it's finished. So let me show you what I've done here. So the main thing is to adjust the brakes. The hardest thing was to adjust the U-brake in the back, but it does pull evenly now. And also there is no rubbing against the rim. So that worked out pretty well. I also did the front brake, the Avid Shorty Ultimate. This brake was awesome to adjust. It feels amazing. It feels incredibly crisp, no rubbing on the pads. Very nice and crisp action. I did have to get this piece of the straddle cable pretty close to the tire to get the geometry set sort of in a normal way, which is basically when the brakes are applied, a 90 degree angle here and the pads parallel to the rim. Um, and then I just routed this tag into the cable off to the side for now. I might try and neaten that up somehow or play with this a little bit more, but in the stand at least this feels amazing. And then of course, I also set up the Advent X drivetrain, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. Well, I'll put the camera in, in a, on a tripod and show you that that's all working. And then as far as accessories, this saddle is gonna go. I need to buy something that's a little bit nicer, but that's what I had lying around. So I've got a saddle, got the saddle height set, got the cockpit all set up. I've got these ODI Rogue grips, my favorite grips, an M-Wave bell, my favorite bell, which attaches with this little strap and the original four finger brake levers, which I think are awesome. Got the stem all tightened up. Everything is just set up really well right now. So really, really happy 
with how this thing turned out. Okay, and to show you guys that the drive frame is working, so shift through all the gears. And when I'm in this higher gear, there's no rubbing on the frame anywhere. So that actually worked out really well. That was the part of this conversion I was most afraid of, but nothing rubs. Dropouts did spread okay, and there doesn't seem to be any cracking in the frame. So really happy with that. And I can shift through all the gears. Maybe you have to adjust that barrel adjuster a little bit, just a hair, but there we go. You know, shift through everything, no problem. And this derailleur has a clutch. The clutch is off now. I can also turn the clutch on. And it's still, it's a little harder to pedal, but still shifts through everything just fine. So the drivetrain is working as well. So there you have it, the 1988 Rally Technium, the Chill, completely upgraded. The only things original here, well, the only thing is the brake levers. Everything else is completely new. The, spray, the frame was spread to 135 millimeters from 126, so quite a wide spread because this is a pretty old standard for mountain bikes. The other challenge, aside from the, the frame, was the front brake because this old rally has the holes for the springs are on the wrong side of the cantilever post, so the only brake I found that would work is the Avid Sh Ultimate Shorty, Avid Shorty Ultimate, but it does work very well. Uh, the drivetrain worked out fine. There is no rubbing anywhere in any of the gears. It shifts right. The chain line should be right. The Praxis Alba crankset works perfectly. And I'm really excited to ride it. I have not tried the bike out yet. I will take you with me when I go on its maiden voyage. Really excited to try out the tires, see how this thing feels off-road. And also, the other thing with this bike, again, is the gearing. I think the chainring, I think it was a 34 tooth. So 34 tooth chainring and an 1148 at the back with the 26 inch tires, the 26 by 2.1s. And that should make for very low gearing overall. So this is quite exciting. It should be pretty interesting to ride. So very happy with how that turned out. And you can look forward to seeing a few more of me, videos of me riding the bike. And also you can look forward to several more bike builds and resto mods coming up. In fact, I have seven total this spring. This is number one finally done. So six more bikes coming, and I'll show them in various level of detail. Some more detail, others less like this one. So that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks as always for watching. Take care and have a great rest of your day.